So one weekend I was watching the newest episode of Licorice Recoil and I basically stumbled upon this scene. It looked very suspiciously like code, so as a developer, I naturally paused and I checked it out. So long story short, after some digging, I found that this snippet of code is taken from an open source library. In fact, it's part of a Node.js package called Readable Stream under version 2.20, links in the description below. But that link should take you to the source code that has the exact same lines as displayed in the anime. I'll explain how I got to that conclusion, but first, let me give a brief intro of Licorice Recoil, which is where this snippet came from. So imagine if Japan adopted the Patriot Act, and instead of the CIA fighting terrorism, it's replaced by an organization full of orphan high school age girls with guns, and they kick some serious ass. And that's basically the synopsis of this all anime original, Licorice Recoil. But I'm not here to give you a raving review of the show, because there are other anti-tubers who are doing a much better job than I am. See, I'm here to discuss a much more specific, cultured part of the show. And no, I'm not talking about these thick thighs or this extremely cute outburst. I'm talking about something even more important than just fan service. You probably guessed it, it's Kurumi's Code in Episode 7, and basically the topic of this video. As I explained before, this piece of code is part of a JavaScript open source project. So how do I reach this conclusion? The process is divided into two parts. The first part is reading the code snippet, and what that means is to get to know the language, the syntax, and a little bit of the context of what it's trying to do. The second part is the search. In this part, we'll look if this snippet is somewhere on the internet. So without further ado, let's get right into reading the snippet. Instantly from the keywords var and the function call require, I knew this was JavaScript. However, it's not just JavaScript you see in the browser, but rather Node.js. What tipped me off is this requires function call. This built-in function only exists in the context of Node.js. If you didn't get any of that, don't worry, I won't bore you with the details. Basically, we now know that this snippet is in JavaScript. Okay, now that we know the language and the specific runtime environment, let us further inspect this snippet. I can tell you the require keyword in Node.js is a way to import code from other modules. Usually, these other modules or dependencies are created by other developers and can be downloaded. There are four require statements in this code. The snippet requires buffer shims, core util is, inherits, and util. Based on the name, I had a suspicion these are actual Node.js modules that exist online. So I went on to npm, which is the repository of all open source Node.js packages, and found that they all exist. The fact that this snippet has these dependencies that exist online further cements the idea that one, is no doubt the language is Node.js, and two, it may be part of some larger open source package. After the require statement, I moved on to this var debug equals void zero line. I find this odd because I have not seen this before, but based on some resources online, I found this is an archaic way of instantiating a variable as undefined. Fantastic, now I know we are working with some legacy code. Okay, next section. This conditional statement is pretty straightforward. Debug util holds the reference to the module of util, and if debug log exists in this util module, then it sets the debug to a function returned by the module. If you look at the util documentation for debug log, we can see that this function basically allows developers to label their logs. And of course, if debug util is null, or debug util debug log is null, then we set debug to an empty anonymous function. So why the conditional? Well, I think this is what they call defensive programming. And so what that means is that we can't assume debug util or debug util .debug log is not null, so we have a conditional to check for that case. The next line sets buffer list to some internal file as evident by this path string. Immediately following that defines string decoder, but does not instantiate any value to it. This line is interesting where we take the util variable, which is just a reference to the util module, and calling this dot inherit function. I dug around and found that this dot inherit is an archaic way of doing inheritance for class like objects. Now, I'm not one of those long time JavaScript developers, because at the time when they were probably writing this code, I was writing my first Hello World program. However, this is a way to do inheritance for these object like classes at the time. The documentation basically says it's legacy and we should use the new language features for inheritance instead. All right, guys, we're almost there. This is the last piece, I promise you. But this next section is basically a function that is incomplete because the anime cuts away before it can show what's defined in the code. The only thing that's given to us are the function parameters and a comment saying it's not cacheable. 
Oh, that was a lot of technical jargon. I really hope none of you clicked away, and if you did, I congratulate you for being such an awesome person and sitting through that. And because you're such an awesome person, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content so far. Now that we've finished reading the code, we can finally move on to the search. Alright, my first instinct is that it's some open source code and it must be online somewhere. So I went on to GitHub and searched for this specific snippet of code. At first I was very unsuccessful and I was on the verge of giving up until I searched for the exact comment at the end of the snippet. I got over 6 k code matches on GitHub and I was like holy crap I cannot sift through all of this. However I eventually did and I'm glad I did because I noticed something very novel. If we go through the matches we can see the code is all the same. It was then a light bulb went off in my head. All these code matches are simply because these repos are forked from one singular source, and that one singular source is this readable stream repo under the organization Node.js. I inspected the suspected file, and I did indeed find the comment. However, the code surrounding it does not look like the snippet at all. I did not stop there because in my reading of the code snippet, I noticed how there are some lines that were considered obsolete by today's JavaScript standards. And also, code is ever evolving and changing, so nothing stays the same. So. What that means is that this code must be somewhere in the past. Fortunately, Git is a versioning control system, which means that it has a history of all commits and therefore an older version of the code. Thus, I began my journey of parsing through the commits to find this exact snippet of code we see in Licorice Recoil. With my trusty terminal and after a lot of Git checkouts, I finally found the commit and the release version of where this snippet of code in the anime was taken from. My god, what have I done with my life? Alright, there we go. That was my process of how I found that snippet. Okay, so the next question is, does this make sense in the context of the show? Short answer, eh, not really. So this is going to go into spoilers of episode 7. So if you haven't watched the show, go watch it so you can come back to watch this video. So basically, Mika-sensei here is going on a date in this mystery bar, and obviously our lovely protagonists are trying to crash that date. They only know the bar's name, so that's Kurumi, the best hacker in Japan, to find this bar. And of course, she uses this internet automatic search program to essentially find it. Considering that this is a snippet taken from an open source library whose function is to create a stream of data, which, by the way, can be used for a variety of different applications, it's hard to say that this accomplishes the task as intended. Ended. I like to believe that this readable stream package would be used in this internet automatic search program to but include it in the source code is just just weird? Not to mention this snippet of code is from 2016, so unless Licorice Recoil is set in that time, then I don't see why they would use outdated code. My honest opinion, they needed some placeholder code and somehow this was chosen. I hope you enjoyed my little adventure into diving some code I found in a show. When I first saw it, my thoughts were like, this has got to be of some importance, so I went down a semi-rabbit hole of investigating this snippet. I'm surprised by the results, and hopefully you did too. Anyhow, that's all I have for now. I will see you all next time.